There's so much to explore about Malaysia. Its depth and diversity opens new windows of experience everywhere. I'm going on an adventure with some of the top contemporary artists in Malaysia to try and understand what it is about their country that inspires such fascinating work. I hit the road on a journey through country and canvas. Oh my gosh, stop it! So the paper is wet. To discover why Malaysia's melting pot comes together like a perfect mistake. It's all about perfect mistakes. It's a mad, mad trip where life imitates art. I get taken through a maze of creative passages. Who would have thought we'd be breathing out of noses, all the nostrils together, okay? I get messed up and mixed up with all kinds of mediums. And I feel like down and dirty. <laughs> This passage takes me back to the most memorable places <laughs> to discover there's still so much more to explore beneath the surface. I'm Denise Keller, and on this passage, I'm going art and about. My passage begins, predictably enough, in KL. The capital is where the country's top art galleries and collectors are based. And as a rising art hub in the region, it's hungry for new talent. Jailani Abu Hassan is one of Malaysia's most celebrated artists, trained at prestigious art schools in London and New York. Today, Jai has brought me back to where he began in Malaysia. What drives his work and what he's trying to teach is something he calls the perfect mistake. Use the, all the element, line, texture, form, whatever you can think of. Sorry, I didn't mean to splash you. <laughs> this is a mistake, a mistake with a purpose. Now, if you don't make a mistake, you're going to draw something you recognize. This is not a recognizable good thing. You just splash thing. You're making a mistake. And you purposely do that because you want to translate your feeling. You want to translate your experience. And what Denise is doing is a riot of love. <laughs> Look at that. Yes. Jai's work juxtaposes imagery of the kampung, or Malay village, against the preoccupations of the world around it. For me, he captures a random quirkiness about Malaysia that I love. And this is New York though, right? New York and Pahang. New York and Pahang, two different worlds, kind of like collided. And, juxtaposed. And juxtaposed and it creates you this mysterious narration, mysterious story. This is like a, like a mud river in, in Pahang. And the calmness and the serene of the Pahang rivers. So this is where, where we come from, this is where my world. And juxtaposed with the New York, we used to have a very heavy traffic and the hustle and bustle of the yeah. city. Such energy. New York is, a, is where the art, the energy, the inspiration is all there. Mm. So I like to play with that too, you know, where you originate and where you want to be. Mm. It's kind of dichotomy or, mm. or duality kind of approach. His style evolves, but there's always a trace of Jai's rural kampung background in his work. Wherever you go, there's always strong sense of locality in me, you know. I grew up in a small kampong, you know. You, you can never get rid of that route, no matter how far you travel. Yeah. So when you get back here, you automatically hook to that ground. You know? oh! Jai's journeys to the kampong and back again are always a fun ride. His images carry a cruisy vibe that becomes familiar the more you explore this part of Malaysian life. But his work also shows a great command of craft, something Jai started way before art school. When did you first draw? I had this little boy who taught me how to draw when I was in kindergarten. And you know what, what, what we drew? It was an umbrella on the ground, and he said, this is my mother's grave. 
It's really sad. Is this? Yeah. So, so it, it, it struck me like with a minimal effort like that, it could convey such emotion, such feeling. I think drawing has such strong power. That's the power of image is so, so strong at that moment. Yeah. And I start to draw the scenes. Nail at the end there. Stop it! The stop is wet. Jai's process combines the playful spirit of simplicity with a complicated concoction of experimental media. Just don't don't light that stuff up. <laughs> there we go. Don't try this at home. Everything from flammable liquids to bitumen are thrown together in a random alchemy. It's okay, now you do your bitumen thing. Oh, that's lovely. I like that. I like that. You're going to see a lot of this thing in my work. He's the mad scientist! Jai reckons that somewhere in this madhouse lies the perfect mistake. So what is the perfect mistake? The mistake was there, there, there. So even this, you know, any mark will fascinate me. I'll think of something to, to, to make it alive. Yeah, yeah. You know? The best part about it is to take advantage of that. Right, right. The moment, you have to grab that particular moment. If you miss that, you know, you're going to miss it. Jai's studio is splattered wall to wall with evidence of his artistic impulses. So this is not done yet. I need to have some mark there. Go oh, easy, Tiger. We just started with oh, this yeah, one yeah. here. I'm a very impatient artist, and you can't stay put. Black, I love the black. Okay, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. See? This is a mistake, this is a mistake, but look at it again. It's not there. a mistake, see? It's like a part of the wall texture. Okay. Can you see that? Yeah. That's what I mean by taking advantage of that. See? It's all about perfect mistakes. Huh? Can I do a perfect mistake on you? Oh, yeah. There! Oh. <laughs> You've been marked by DK. Woohoo! What I like best about Jai's work is how it's all about the process, how the fun is in the ride itself. And that's what I love about coming here, being able to jump at random into a feast of flavors that fall together like a perfect mistake. This is a kampong food, right? Yep. This is very much kampong. Yeah. A well-deserved meal. Uh, huh? Well you can take the boy out of the kampong, but you can't take the, can't take the kampong, kampong out of the boy. No way. There you go. Selamat makan. Once you taste the kampong, you're sure to come back for more. Up next, I revisit the East Coast, this time plunging into a wonderful world of watercolor. I've been here before, but the East Coast has a current that lures you in. I could come here again and again, and every time, experience it in all kinds of different colors and different lights. The East Coast states Trungano and Kelantan are special to me. Every journey back to the fishing villages that dot the gorgeous coastline of these states is like stepping into a painting. This is the home of Malaysia's maestro of watercolor, Chang Fi Meng. His awesome details and colors bring out the beautiful soul of the East Coast that I find so endearing. This is Feeming's favorite muse, the lives of fishing communities out here at the front lines of the coastal heartland. Well, I didn't think I'd be working this hard, Feeming. Okay, what did we catch today? The palang fish. That looks like your painting. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Look at the color. Beautiful. You see? I love this. Yeah. You go to the environment to get yeah. your subject matters, don't yes. you? Yes, yes. Yeah. I sometimes not really come for Some sketching. Beauty. Just come for feeling, you know. Feeling. Talk to the fisherman, look at the fish, you know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 20, 20 ringgit, one kilo now. See? Why why I stay in Trungano? Mm. <laughs> I eat all the fresh, fresh fish every day. Yeah, I hear you. Yummy, yummy. Yummy. I feel like eating fish now. <laughs> Feeming Studio sits in a tropical dream. 
I could so spend my life as an artist here. That is, of course, if I could paint as well as him. These are beautiful. Yeah, this is all the sketches I have been doing around this area. I love this one. Mm, the wind, huh? You captured the wind so well in this one. Tringanu has so much of the rich and romantic colours. I mean, just looking at the flags of the boats just float by with the wind. There's so much vibrancy, yet you can't pinpoint what exactly is vibrant because everything's yeah. slowed down. All yes, I want to yes. do is snooze under a coconut tree. And I love the pace. I love this feeling. Why did you choose watercolors? Because I started travel. You travel, your watercolor is so easy to dry, you know, so easy to handle. Mm -hmm. So slowly, I don't know, I fall in love with the watercolor. How do you choose your subject matters? I have a period, you know, scenery times. Mm. Then I go for window series, and then I go for bird caves and mm. batik series. Bits and pieces yeah. of, of yeah. life. Every scene, I always think about Tenggane. It's not just island. It's not just diving. If you really pay attention to see the people, the, the every corner, Tenggano is, is, is something deeper. Yeah. The lives of Tenggano's coastal fishermen has fed Fiming's creativity for years. He says that every day here, you'll discover new ways to soak in the details if you keep your eyes and ears open. Hello. Hello. Bali. Apa Today, Fiming has taken me to meet the subject of his latest painting. Puck Rumley is a Jerusalem who performs the traditional role of human sona, listening for fish. I hear udang. <laughs> Lots of udang. Uh, there's no, there no sound of udang. How you know that? Did you really cheat? <laughs> I just made that up. <laughs> They are more looking for one kind of fish called glama. What are the sounds uh, of the fish do they make fish, here? Yeah. Bunyi glama. Bunyi dia kalau dia ramai ya, dia bunyi. That's the sound of the fish. Yeah. yeah. The glama. Yang lain? Selain tadi. Ikan duri dia bunyi. Don't make any noise. He's looking for fish. Ada bunyi ni mutu, ada mutu, ada boat ni kan? What boat? I can't hear the boat. Can you hear the boat? I must be deaf. Setengah kilometer tu dia boleh dengar. Half kilometer. That's amazing. Feming takes it all back into his beach house studio and brings his subjects to life in watercolor. Very, just like that or something. I also noticed that Jerusalem has a particular scar here. Jerusalem is kind of a hero in my heart, you know, thinking that they are really brave enough, you know, going to sea and look fish. Mm. So I starting to imagine probably one Jerusalem been been attacked by the kind of fish, maybe shark, maybe paracuda. So I just create the scarf there to, to show that how dangerous their work, you know. It's very vibrant, Feeming. It's it's beautiful. If I didn't know where you came from and I looked at this painting, I think I would pinpoint Trangana. Throughout Feeming's work is a signature saturation of rich colors captured in the fabric of everyday life. What's the fascination with batik? I notice batik yeah. is a trend for you. I love color. Every color I use. But Trangana batik. It's exactly it's like that, no roof. They, they split up the colour, all kind of colour that they don't care about whether this match, that match. Well, you're the supermodel yeah, here. I'm, the, <laughs> I'm, I'm probably the last man who wear this colourful party. <laughs> Living in Tranganu, Feeming gets to soak in surroundings rich with traditional Malay crafts. 
So they bleach the whole thing, but the only thing that remains is yeah, the so wax. Second, po second process, they're going to add another color and they cover again with wax. And then they wash again. Right. So this is three process. They mm. call batik tiga lapis. Mm. Saya ni ada kalau purple ni yang ada lip ni ada purple lagi. Mana purple? Ini. Ah. Oh. Now they cover the purple. Ah. And then they use a coating to wash, it become white. Right. So the purple color is in the wax. Yeah. After that they will they will add in the dye. Just like your watercolor, yeah. huh? Your dry brush technique, <laughs> yeah, you remove, to... add. Yeah, it's the same same kind of feeling. One of the things I really like about Feeming's work is the way he captures the industrious spirit of Tringanu's women. Ooh, what do we have here? Oh, there's Kafuk Leko. <laughs> One of the highlights of Tringanu. Yes, huh? yes. Try. Take the biggest piece. Good, huh? Mm. Mm. With big orders coming in fast and furious, I try my hand at helping out the ladies. Okay. Wow. Okay. Feeming's watercolors got me so immersed in the stunning scenes of the East Coast that sometimes I lose myself in the moment here. Hey, my lesson's finished. You're not finished, you're still in the dreams. <laughs> oh, you're finished? Yeah. Well, I must be boring teacher. <laughs> no, you're the most exciting artist I've had in a long time. Mm. Wow, nice. Ooh, just brought that to life, didn't you? Coming up, I take a road trip through Perak. But wait, 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 it is leaning to discover how life does imitate art. No, I don't have a monkey in my family. My passage takes me to Ipo in Perak, home state to one of Malaysian art's rising stars, Jay Anu. Ipo was the next big station after KL. It's done in the style of, I think, the turn of the century. The whole British Moorish style, right? Yeah, of, yeah. Uh, and in the old days, like the towns were built according to the trains. And the railway lines uh, had to have a station every 12 miles because that was as far as the train could go before they had to tank up on water for the yeah, steam engines, steam yeah. Engines. This because is the, the biggest are. station though in Perak though, in right? In Perak, basically because of the tin industry. Very industrious state, yeah. you know, um, as all most Malaysian states were. Yeah. Don't want to offend anybody here, <laughs> but Perak is the best, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Perak was the bastion of the British Empire's prosperous tin industry, drawing all kinds of characters to profit from the world's richest deposits of tin. So tell me, why then is this state named Perak, which means silver? Did someone get their metal mixed up? It's this sort of curiosity that drives Anu's artistic quest for subjects and characters to tell the story of Perak in his paintings. My link with this state goes back to my great uncle, who was a doctor of medicine. But he had gold fever and never struck gold. So then he heard there was silver in a place called Silver, yeah. Pera. He came uh. here and he struck a legendary mine. Portrait sessions are Anu's favorite part of his artistic process. The experience of sketching fascinating muses like Shamini leads him to treasure troves made possible by travels in art. As an artist, I'm completely taken with this, this story of a, a, a small town girl from Perak 
uh, meeting all these amazing, amazing artists. The list goes on. It, it, it's Picasso. Who else is it? Di Chirico, Sir Augustus John, Felix Topolsky. Yes, Sir John as well. No, this is my favorite. 14 years ago, I was 64. This is me at 64. You're gorgeous. We love your portraits, but I'd love to see a painting of you. Now, you can only take the picture I show you because I will have the insurers refusing to insure me. That's just oh my God, beautiful. That is so wow. Time Life, the magazine, commissioned Pietro Allegra to do a portrait of Pope John the 23rd. The Pope looked at it and he said, I want this as the Madonna in a private shop in the Vatican. Thank you so much for having us. Hey, thank you so much for agreeing to sit Let for me. Have a good Lovely day. to meet all of you, the Cameroon crew. I think you should be the stars. You got that? You're the stars. Bye. Bye. See you. Bye. Thank you. We leave Ipo on a road trip through Perak's Kinta Valley in search of more people and places that make up the colorful narratives in Anu's paintings. Set against the beautiful backdrop of Perak's Hills. It's such a scenic journey. Oh, it is, it is. The drive is beautiful. Yeah. And you know, I've, I've done it over and over again. It's just become something really dear to me. This drive, it's so enjoyable. And the Banjarans la, around Perak. Old states ringed by these mountain ranges, they're really quite spectacular. Yeah. This landscape inspired Finding Graceland, the title of Anu's paintings about his own roots in Perak, the state officially called the Land of Grace. Perak per se is wonderful, but it's really about my personal connection with it. Uh, as a place to call home, you know, as a place to go back to. It's about a connection to a place, love. Like. So from all the, the gems that you've created so far, which is the one that invokes like the most for you?